It is calm today. Someone sings like the lark breaking out into clear sky. I have thought of you lately and my being begins to sigh. I feel my whole now, experiences flowing to wonder. Happy memories, it takes so little to sing the songs of hope as your words soothe me. And when I wish the universe seems to set my sight and vision into an alignment of all things to come. I hear again all new meanings born as my life becomes bliss. And all things come about when I wish, when I wish, when I wish, when I wish. Well, I'd, I'd heard of hyroids uh, growing up in Leeds as a, a teenager in the 1960s. Um, quite often people would say things like, uh, oh, you belong in Menston, you, or you're going to end up in Menston. And at the time I thought it was a kind of generic term like bedlam or you know, some sort of prison or something. I didn't relate it to an actual place. And it was only when I you know, began to know about the mental health system I realised it was a, a, an actual building and, and it was a, a hospital. I first of all became ill when I was about 20. And uh, I went first to St James's then to Hyroid. And uh, Hyroid's was a bit of a strange place, but uh, I was in two years. Yeah, <laughs> so I remember it quite well. <laughs> I remember the people there, but you have you have good times as well with people who are there. But it was, it was good to get out in the in the long run. But um, some people just stay in there for years. I think it's about one in four. I think it, people get some kind of mental illness. But that, that means there's a lot of people have have an illness. You can look on the street and you know so, certain people. But I think it's because we're going through hard times as well. You know. My name's Anne Pickard and I worked at High Roads Hospital on Denton Ward and I was there from 1989 to 94. I wasn't a nurse, I was what they called a healthcare assistant. The, there was quite good nurses when I was there, I felt, and um, we did things like occupational therapy used to come twice a week and people could do crafts and things. We did um, relaxation classes and I ran a little woman's group where we I used to take woman's hour and then we'd meet together and talk about it and things. It, the ward was classed as acute psychiatry and it was for people under 65 years of age and it was supposed to be short stay but sometimes people were in six or seven months. Medication was the main treatment but also the, uh, they had one-to-one -one sessions with the nurses like counselling, uh, cognitive therapy uh, and various other uh, sessions like that, plus seeing the psychiatrist on a regular basis. About 16 years ago I went to High for the first time, innit? Yeah. The first time I went I was on Clifton Ward and then when I went back in because I had my son, I went on to Mother and Baby Unit on Denton Ward. It was a little nursery and I, you know, I'd sleep in the dorm but like staff would look after me and if you woke up there was a key to lock the door, you had to lock him in, for his, you know, in case anybody kicked off. So and I spent time in there with him and then I used to walk him up and down wards and corridors. Most of the mums were quite psychotic when they came in, and uh, but they wanted to stay with the baby and bond with them. Sometimes I got a bit angry and like I'd cut myself and stuff and flip out, so they'd pin you to the floor and there'd be about five of them on top of you. You know, and you'd be wrestling with them. <laughs> and they'd inject you with acupuncture to put you to sleep. I'd never got in seclusion room to just sat by your bed, you know, one to one. And if you went to the toilet, there was half in the toilet door. And if you went for a bath, they'd be sat in the bathroom with you. I, I was always um, very much against ECT. Um, and I, I always had very mixed feelings about it as a treatment. But when mums came in very psychotic with newly born babies, I mean, the youngest one we had was five days old when, when mum came in, um, ECT was like a miracle. Uh, I, I was always, they became well so quickly and it just seemed to work in that uh, case very, very well and then they could continue to bond with the child and go home. Right. 
12 zaps of it, 12 goes. That's like one session. Um, the IRDCT did take you down along corridors to this little room and they took you inside and showed you all equipment and everything. And then they put you to sleep and do what they did and then you come back and they'd put you in this little room and give you a cup of tea and a piece of toast and you'd have a headache as if you'd been on drink forever and I like an hangover, it was a bad headache. Then they'd take you back to ward. It just depends if you were sectioned and you refused all they were still allowed to do it on a section. They're allowed to do a lot of things on a section that they're not when you go voluntary. I can remember the first time I ever um, was asked to support somebody down to have ECT. I'm, I mean, I'm quite um, a fancy person and the injections and things don't do. And I'd seen uh, films of it where people are sort of jerking on the bed. And, I was, and, and we went down to this room and there was some staff and the doctor came out and uh, they asked this, uh, it was a lady, uh, just to lay on the bed. And they just gave her an injection and... Uh, uh, they just put these electrodes on her head and the only thing that moved was her big toes just went like that. And I was like, is that it? And I said, yes, she's had it. And you, you, when you see films or talk about it, you've, you've all this thing of people going in spasm. And I do think originally they didn't give them a muscle relaxant. But now that was it. And it took a few seconds. And then they were taken to a recovery room. Then they had tea and biscuits. And then we went back up to the ward. And I, I was very nervous about seeing it. And I was always glad I did because it dispelled all my myths. Well, I went in from St James's. I had 18 months in St James's. Then I went in an ambulance to Ayrite in 1978. And I got, actually got, didn't get, I got discharged to Shazbury House in 1982. And I did ward work and everything and I helped the nurses, I helped the patients, all like a nurse myself. It was a mixed ward I was on. Rington isn't, but Kinsley House was and Ram School was. The ward I worked on were all female. Most of the time it were like dormitories, into these different units made into dormitories. They might have had one or two rooms, single rooms, but they weren't really up to much, really. It didn't, didn't really bother me, but I, well, I, come, I got to some stage where I thought, oh, I'll write to authorities and see if, the, if I could be discharged or get my own place somewhere or something, but no, become of it. I, ne I never heard from them. I did write to them on my, in my own time and mm. uh, my own little space, but no, become of it, so I ended up getting discharged to Shaftesbury out of all places. It was very varied what I, I had to deal with while I was there. It, it was quite a lot um, around people wanting to leave hospital and there was support for people at tribunals and, and reviews. Um, but often it would be um, about medication and people felt they were on too, too high a level of drugs. And then I'd go and try and negotiate. Very rarely did we manage to get anywhere with that particular one really. Doctors were quite adamant that they knew about medicine and the patient didn't know about medicine. And I as an advocate, we didn't know about medicine, that wasn't our realm. So they weren't very willing to, uh, to, to make any changes there, even when perhaps people were having quite severe side effects, you know, which was quite upsetting really. Um, so quite a few times I supported people who were having electric shock treatment and who perhaps didn't want to have electric shock treatment and that was one of the most upsetting things because uh, people were really terrified of having that treatment and uh, uh, so we had some struggles. The, the doctors um, uh, attitudes varied quite a lot as well and some were very happy and willing and thought it was a good thing that the patients had someone to help them put their views forward and some of them were just absolutely arrogant and didn't agree with my role and thought it was a complete waste of money and you know what what the hell was I doing there. I dealt with uh, quite a lot of pe people who'd been there for, for decades really and uh, and they considered that that was their home really so they were they were quite challenged and a bit threatened by the thought that they would have to leave i think some people who were discharged would found ways to get themselves you know 
back into hospital really it was they didn't like it you know out there so that was a bit of a challenge in my time it, like I was dealing with people who desperately wanted to get out and supporting them but I was also dealing with some people who desperately wanted to get back in and and the doctor was saying well there's no room for you anymore so it was a, it was a strange experience really to be um, doing both those things in the same period, really. You know, at its height, it was, I, I imagine, a, a, like a small town, really, and, and you, would, you wouldn't have to go outside the, the grounds at all. But, but to an extent, it was still a, a, a closed environment, so people could, um, that there was a bank, and people would, on Monday mornings, there'd always be a big queue as people went to get their, their allowance. You know, they got a small allowance for being in hospital. Uh, and that was a busy time down at that, that part of the hospital, the administration block. And there was a little shop there and uh, there were, really there was everything people needed to, to live for quite a long time. So I think a lot of people didn't really go out very much. We had a discipline, it was very disciplined and, um, you know, you had to fit in with the routine, you know, you had to go along with it. Um, but he, he, was, he wasn't too bad, but he was, you, you were restricted, you couldn't go out of the ward. You, you, you know, you're on a, if you're on a section, that is, you can go out of the ward so you felt you couldn't go where you wanted to go. But um, Well, medication, well, sometimes it's actually, you, you, you're not sure of the time when it's like, cause it does not give you physically the best of kind of reaction really. Side effects, yeah, I well, oh, had to put up with a lot of them. That's right from the beginning, but you, you're wondering why am I feeling so bad, you know, and uh, but there, there, there was the side, the side effects as well, yeah. And um, I, I, after I was off section, just used to wonder about the corridors, you know, just aimlessly really, you know, you, no really incentive to get back into the community again. You thought your life was just going nowhere, you know. You got no help. I mean, at the time, it was my sister who got me out. I mean, she said, I'll try to get you a flat, you know. And uh, she did, a Betsy, she got me a Betsy, where I started from again, and I gradually worked from there, you know. She got in touch with him and she said, well, he's coming out now, so just stay out. Because I could have quite, at first I actually tried to come out, but because I've become so institutionalised, I... I was going, think, you know, back back in again, really, you know, because <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I was physically sick with the dull tablets and everything. But it was, it was good to get out in the in the long run. Like you know, some some reports uh, you'd get that on some of the wards, uh, like the night nurses, some of them were very good, but some of them, because they wanted a quiet night, they would give the patients the maximum dosage of medication, what they used to call PRN, which is medication that is given as needed. Well, the night nurses would come on and say, well, actually, all this medication is needed, and they would give everybody their full dose, and everybody would fall asleep, and then they would be fine, they would have... But you probably don't want to put that... Bit. People have quite positive memories. I think the people that were possibly detained against the will and very distressed at the time and found the old you know, if they're to be restrained or something like that, that whole experience is really terrible. But for a lot of people, it was a lifeline and they have very fond memories of it and getting the support they needed and going in, at, you know, at a very, very low hour, feeling like they wanted to die and coming out and being able to go back to work and live with the family and look after the children and things. So. Um, I, I sometimes find it quite sad that everything you hear it is so negative when, you know, there was a lot of very good work went on, but everybody focuses on the small amount of bad, really. That's my feeling. I think people go back to, like, the 60s and 70s. I mean, sometimes, in some ways, you, like some of the treatments like ECT, you think they're still not 100% sure how it works and they're still doing it. Um, but, but generally, medications that improved, people didn't get the horrendous side effects and things and all that. People used to say they used to feel numb and have no emotions. People don't say that the same now about the new antipsychotic drugs and things. They're much, much improved. So, but, and when you do talk to people, there's not many people complain about hyroids just prior to it closing. It's all from like the 60s and 70s. So 
Uh, and but that's somehow stuck, and nobody's ever been able to move away from it. Um, well, very long corridors, as as you might think. And um, in the winter time, uh, I, I remember that um, patients, particularly the male patients, would would lie next to the the long radiators that were down the main corridor because I, th I think they weren't allowed to sleep on the on their ward and on their bed so they would come out and because the, it was warm underneath the radiators they would lie underneath the radiators so sometimes you'd walk down the corridor and you'd feel these eyes look up at you watching you as you went past and it, I felt very self-conscious and the, the first time I saw the, the ballroom there I was very struck by that really because it, it was largely disused at that time and it was very a very desolate looking room but absolutely massive it's, that was another thing that struck me there were these four big stone fireplaces which had been used to heat the room when the victorians would have their their balls and i didn't quite understand what its role had been really whether it was just for staff or whether they would have staff patient uh, dues there but in my time, it was very dusty, and there were there was a stage that would, was kind of had um, chairs stacked up on it, and there was old furniture lying about, and there was a a badminton net that was kind of looking a bit derelict. Really, one side of it was down, and it looked as if at one point it had been used as a sports hall, but it wasn't really being used now. It was just all very dramatic and very very strange. Part of it had been. Um, uh, partitioned off and it was a, a patient's coffee bar so this one corner of it was a, a patient's coffee bar uh, uh, which was in my memory was always very messy you know you'd go in and there'd be like tea spilt on the floor and on the tables and and uh, cu you know cu cups lying about really it wasn't really a very pleasant place to to go and sit it seemed to me it wasn't really a a, a very therapeutic environment as a whole really. Well, this chapel was built specifically for the simple burial service. More often than not the only people attending the burials would be the clergy and possibly the grave digger. They'd come here, they would have a simple service in the chapel and then they'd go outside and be buried. And, and what we intend to do as the Friends of Hyroids Memorial Garden is create somewhere where people come and reflect, possibly find the relatives. Um, one of the things that I'm specifically interested in is locating these people, tracing their history and putting people in touch. And I suppose if just one great-granddaughter, great-grandson comes and seeks out the relative and brings a bunch of flowers, we've done his job. It's about giving them respect as well. Even in Back in 1881, the workhouses saw that burying people in pauper graves wasn't really showing them respect without putting them a gravestone on top, you know, with the name. They never did it here. This was something that was never done. They were just simply buried in unmarked graves and literally forgotten about. There aren't very many of these former um, Victorian asylums still alive. There's the odd one. But the majority are shutting them down. They're either being knocked down or they're being converted into housing. Hyroids, Menston Asylum, I, um, Menston Mental Hospital, as, as it was known in all the different names, it's been converted to housing. It's quite a nice building. A little bit scary looking, but the architecture is beautiful. So, yes, they, they're keeping that, but they're removing all traces of what it was, in that sense. And all we're left, really, is this chapel and all these people that lived on those wards, that lived out their lives, and here they are. And I think it's very important that we don't brush all this under the carpet. Yes, there was like, well, they used to refer to it as sort of a revolving door, and you'd see the same people uh, time and time again uh, coming back in. And uh, I think, especially people with depression, uh, they'd lift the mood up a little bit, they'd do staged going home, and then, You'd look round and they'd seem to be back again. Um, but it was a bit of a safety net for them, I think, and, the, you know, they, f they felt safe there, really. Um, I know a lot of people have quite negative thoughts about high-rides, but a lot of patients I knew did feel very safe there uh, and there was no pressure on them. You know, they could just, you know, 
relax really. I mean if there was quite a lot of very poorly people on the ward and it was quite chaotic um, that was quite difficult uh, but generally um, I, I think most people quite enjoyed that space and the pressure from work and families that was all removed. They could just be there.